Ken Livingston is suspended from the Labour Party, accused of anti-Semitism. You're a lying racist. Really? Why don't you go and check A Nazi apologist. A Nazi apologist. A Nazi apologist. You're a disgusting Nazi apologist, Livingston. The former London mayor was caught up in an extraordinary public confrontation with a fellow MP. The latest twist in the row that's piling pressure on Jeremy Corbyn. We have suspended where appropriate. We've investigated all cases. We will not tolerate anti-Semitism in any form whatsoever in the party. Also tonight, doctors on alert over side effects of the contraceptive pill after four young women die. Hillsborough families are said to sue the police for concealing the truth about the disaster. And the new study that says vaping really is the best way to give up smoking. This is the ITV Evening News with Mary Nightingale and Mark Austin. Good evening. The row over anti-Semitism in the Labour Party erupted today with the former MP and London Mayor Ken Livingstone suspended after an extraordinary outburst. He claimed that Adolf Hitler had once supported Zionists who wanted to create a Jewish state in Palestine. That incensed Labour MP John Mann, who berated Mr Livingstone in the street, branding him a racist and a Nazi sympathiser. It puts more pressure on the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, who insisted there was no place for anti-Semitism in his party. Our deputy political editor Chris Ship witnessed today's events in Westminster. You get to see some unusual things in and around Westminster, but very rarely do you have a ringside seat at something as dramatic as this. Disgusting Bye -bye. racist. Bye -bye. Rewriting Bye -bye. history, Nothing. you're a disgusting Wait, racist. You're saying it's not true. You're, yeah. Yes, you're a lying racist. Really? Why don't you go and uh, check A Nazi history. apologist. Check a Nazi history. apologist. Check a Nazi apologist. You're a disgusting Nazi apologist, Livingstone. We'd come to ask Ken Livingstone about comments he'd made this morning about Hitler. Go back and check what Hitler did. There's a book called Mein Kampf. But so too had Labour MP John Mann. You dare say that Hitler supported Zionism. So what led to this extraordinary exchange about Hitler? Mr Livingstone spoke about claims of anti-Semitism in Labour and in so doing had said this on the radio. Let's remember when Hitler won his election in 1932, his policy then was that Jews should be moved to Israel. He was supporting um, Zionism. His boy went mad and ended up killing six million Jews. So would he retract the words? Do you maintain what you said earlier. Which truth? In true Ken style, he dug in. You can't deny historical fact. But so where did this row come from? It followed the suspension yesterday of Labour's Bradford MP Naz Shah. Anti-Semitism is racism, full stop. She said sorry for sharing this image on social media before she was elected, suggesting Israel and everyone who lives there should be relocated to the United States. So Ken Livingstone's intervention this morning had clearly not helped. Can I ask how personally you felt about watching Ken Livingstone and listening to him say that Hitler was a Zionist? Grossly offensive, um, a lie and an attempt to discredit the Jewish people. I think it's quite clear that there are too many examples in our party of people with anti-Semitic views where actions are taken quickly enough. So this time, would Jeremy Corbyn take action quickly enough? Are you going to suspend Ken Livingston, Mr Corbyn? Initially, he wouldn't comment, but then he decided Ken Livingston should be suspended. We have suspended where appropriate. We've investigated all cases. We will not tolerate anti-Semitism in any form whatsoever in the party. But by now, no one in Labour was claiming this was turning out to be a good day. Sorry, it would be quite easy to apologise at this stage, wouldn't it? I mean, you what? With Hating the truth. What? You're 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 I haven't defended anybody. But tonight, at Mr Livingstone's home, an Israeli flag was tied to his door. The row over anti-Semitism under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership has not gone away. And Chris, this is an extraordinary row, isn't it? Do you think it will actually do the Labour Party any lasting damage? Uh, you're right, Mary, quite extraordinary. I mean, you see some things on those stairs outside our offices here, uh, but never anything o o on that scale. It's worth just trying to work backwards, really, about how we got uh, to this point. The, for some time, there have been these allegations bubbling away that Jeremy Corbyn's uh, leadership has 
tolerated or not acted quickly enough uh, against anti-Semitism. I have to say the leaderships uh, have always uh, strongly denied those claims. But I think today it was a politician as high profile as the former mayor of London, Ken Livingstone, that was for many people just a step too far. I think really the big test now for Labour is what happens in this disciplinary process. Remember, Ken Livingstone's a very close friend of Jeremy Corbyn, but for many Labour MPs, suspension is not enough. They want him expelled. All right, Chris Shepherd, Westminster, thank you. Doctors are being put on alert following the deaths of four young women who have been taking the contraceptive pill. Two of the women's families told ITV News that they were not aware of the possible risks and GPs and paramedics also missed the signs of fatal blood clots. The Royal College of GPs is now urging doctors and nurses to be more aware of the symptoms. Our national editor, Allegra Stratton, has our special report. 16-year-old Sophie Murray was a fitness fanatic and she dreamed of becoming a paramedic. In October of last year, she started to say that she felt like she was breathing through a straw. She went back to the doctors four times and was told she had asthma, but she went downhill rapidly. Two days after her last visit to the clinic, she woke feeling very sick. And she's just said, Mum, you sound really distressed. You know, she said, Mum, I really can't, I really can't breathe. So I got the phone, went back up to her to ring NHS Directs and um, I don't even down just to get the phone and uh, her lips, her lips were like gone blue. Sophie died later that day. An inquest found the cause of death to be a large blood clot on her lungs linked to the contraceptive pill. Today, the Royal College of GPs told ITV News it will be writing to all doctors and nurses. They should all have a clear understanding that deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism are one of the most serious risks associated with any combined contraceptive. So already they should be trained, but a reminder that this is an issue is always timely. But it's not just Sophie. In the last six months, 17-year-old ballerina Maria Santa and 23-year-old Charlotte Foster died of blood clots linked to the pill. In each case, questions have been asked about whether they got the right care. And then there's 21-year-old Fallon Kurek too, told by a nurse she was just having a panic attack, only to collapse at home in her mum's arms. I said, look, I've had enough of this. I'm bringing an ambulance. They took her in. I went and registered her at the reception. I can't remember whether it was a nurse or a doctor, came through and said, you know, is there any history of heart problems? I said, no, no history of heart problems. Has she been taking any drugs? I said, no, only the pill. And they went, the pill? I went, yeah. She's on the pill? I went, yeah, that's it. And they just went. Young and healthy, here is Fallon as her parents want her to be remembered. She was one of the unfortunate few. The pill is a very safe form of contraception and the chances of side effects are low and, in theory, well known. Around three million women in the UK use the contraceptive pill. Depending on the type of pill, it makes the risk of suffering a blood clot between two and four times higher. That's an extra 1,800 to 3,600 cases a year, though only a few are fatal. Today, one of the country's most senior surgeons calls for doctors to take the symptoms more seriously. I think it has to be one of education and it's getting the importance of, of recognising the possibility even of a deep brain thrombosis and, and treating that seriously even though the symptoms may be minor. Sophie and Fallon's families also call for greater checks. Get straight to your doctor yeah. and tell them to actually Don't check for this. Up. If Fallon had received the treatment, that she needed on the Friday, Fallon would be alive now. The only reason Fallon isn't alive now is because it was left for another three days and she died. Julia Kurek there, and uh, all quite alarming, Allegra, but I guess the message is not to stop taking the pill, no. but just to be aware of the side effects. Yeah, for doctors up and down the country, the contraceptive pill remains extremely safe. It's not the focus of our report. The focus is very much on the side effects, and awareness perhaps isn't as great as it could be. And those side effects or symptoms are if you have a sudden onset of breathlessness, or if you have pain, real pain in your lower leg and calf, or headaches, Go back to your GP, remind them that they often they put you on the pill 
ask you if it's linked, ask if you're on the right pill. So be assertive and be aware, but also as you've seen, the Royal College of GPs are also sending out their note tomorrow to ask GPs up and down the land to be aware themselves. The risks are very low, yeah. but they are there. All right, point well made. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, there is uh, more information about the combined pill and deep vein thrombosis and uh, also an NHS tool where you can check your potential risk on our website. So go to itv.com forward slash news. Now, the families of Hillsborough victims are to press ahead with a multi-million pound court claim against South Yorkshire and West Midlands police forces. It's over the cover-up which led to Liverpool fans being wrongly blamed for the disaster. Evidence has shown more than 100 witness statements had been doctored to cast police in a favourable light. From South Yorkshire, Damon Green reports. The failures of South Yorkshire police at Hillsborough were so clear and so extensive the findings of an inquest jury so complete and so damning that the decision of bereaved families to pursue them for damages is for many a logical step. Others though aren't part of that action and say they know the difference between the officers who tried to save lives and those who tried to cover up their own failings. During the inquest hearings, myself, other family members and survivors of Hillsborough went over and thanked policemen when they gave evidence for the support and the help they'd given to try and alleviate people from the crush that day. But we also, you know, seen many police officers de defend their actions, which were, 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 at the end of the inquest, found wanting. And they are the people who need to um, answer in the future. The civil action was begun last year, but proceedings were delayed until the conclusion of the Hillsborough inquests. Lawyers say they'll pose awkward questions for police. Who did do uh, the, these things? Who was in charge? It doesn't seem credible that this all happened uh, due to some um, uh, misguided uh, one bad apple. It's clear though that some retired police are unhappy at the criticism. A website message to former officers reads, Yes, mistakes were made and we would all like to turn the clock back. You'll be feeling sore, angry and disheartened and that is understandable. But you did a good job. We all did. South Yorkshire Police say they have no comment to make on the legal action they face, but they do have pressing problems. They're still looking for a permanent replacement for the Chief Constable, who was suspended over his handling of the Hillsborough inquests. Damon Green, ITV News, in South Yorkshire. Two men and a woman have been charged with funding terrorism following an investigation launched here after the Paris and Brussels attacks. They were arrested in Birmingham on the 14th and 15th of April and will appear at Westminster Magistrates Court tomorrow. 200,000 desperate children in the Syrian city of Aleppo are now without a doctor. The last paediatrician was killed in a government airstrike on a hospital there. As our international affairs editor Raghi Omar reports, the attack also leaves a truce hanging by a thread. Whatever remained of Syria's tenuous ceasefire came crashing down in the city of Aleppo today. buried along with at least 14 people under rubble, ash and smoke. Even in streets already used to five years of unrelenting bombardment, there was desperation and anguish after the attack by Syrian government planes. As though this city's anguish wasn't enough, Aleppo's traumatized children have now had their last medical lifeline cut. All because of the death of this man. Muhammad Wasim Mu'ath, born, bred and educated at medical school in Aleppo, was the last paediatric doctor for the whole of the city. All other paediatricians have either fled or been killed. Dr David Knott, a trauma surgeon in a major London hospital, has volunteered in Syria and is seen here in the middle working in Aleppo in 2014. He knew Dr Mu'ath. If you take out the only paediatrician that's going to be able to look after children, the 200,000 children that are left in Aleppo will not get any medical treatment at all. Another year from now, perhaps there won't be any doctors left there at all. It's a very real prospect, with human rights group accusing the Assad government of directly targeting medical facilities in opposition areas in order to force civilians to flee. It's a policy that's working with Syria's war producing the largest refugee crisis of modern times. 
Raghi Omar, ITV News. Still to come on the ITV Evening News, the doctor's study that says e-cigs are much safer than tobacco. And points win prizes. The lineup of goodies awaiting players and fans alike if Leicester win the Premier League. Those stories and more after the break. Join us then. Welcome back. E-cigarettes are far less harmful to health than tobacco and should be promoted as a substitute to smoking. That's the conclusion of the Royal College of Physicians, which also found so-called vaping could lead to large numbers of people quitting tobacco. But as our science correspondent Alok Jha reports, the long-term effects of e-cigs is still not known. So the clown ones are really good. Um, if you like the fruity ones, Laffy. Are they healthy? Really are they bad? The debate around e-cigarettes has been clouded in confusion. Harry Moss was a regular smoker until nine months ago when he decided to give vaping a go. I basically wanted to stop smoking. Most of my friends have all quit smoking and, on uh, e-cigarettes or vapors. Um, and I'm, my workmates also are the same. I mean, for the first month, obviously, it was difficult. But yeah, I feel a lot fitter now. And it's that help with quitting smoking that doctors say is too valuable an opportunity to pass up. In a new report, they say that e-cigarettes could make a major contribution to preventing premature death and disease among smokers. The harms of e-cigarettes were unlikely to exceed 5% of those associated with smoking. E-cigarette use seems to be restricted to people who already smoke, and fears that they are a gateway to smoking seem to be unfounded. There's still no long-term research on the health effects of vaping, positive or negative. But it stands to reason that inhaling anything for a long time will have some sort of risks down the line. But what we do know for now is that this is nowhere near as bad for you as cigarettes. And that's what's led doctors to call for vaping to enter mainstream healthcare. At the moment, about 100,000 people die every year in the UK as a direct consequence of their smoking. Going back a few years, the choice was medicinal nicotine or quit completely or smoke. Now we've got electronic cigarettes uh, much closer to the safe end of that spectrum. So the more smokers we can push that way, the better. And you can do that with things like price and availability and media campaigns. At vaping cafes like this one in East London, business is booming. With medical opinion now swinging in their favour, they'll only get busier. Alok Jha, ITV News. Potential buyers of Tata Steel's UK operation are being put off by the company's pension liabilities, the business secretary has admitted. Sajid Javid was speaking after the company's chief executive warned that the country faces disaster if a buyer cannot be found. Hundreds of thousands of British expats will not be able to vote in June's EU referendum, the High Court ruled today. It followed a test case brought by two Britons who've lived abroad for more than 15 years. And our political correspondent Romilly Weeks is outside the court tonight. Now, Romilly, this isn't the end of the matter, is it? No, the two who brought this case say the fight goes on and they will be appealing to the Supreme Court. Arguably, Britons who live in Europe have the most at stake in this referendum. Lawyers for the expats argued in the High Court here that the right, if there's a vote to leave, the right of the two million Britons to live, work, own property, receive free health care abroad could be put at risk. Jacqueline McLennan, who was one of those who brought this case, believe they've got widespread support. The Britons living abroad, I think, feel that there is a fundamental injustice here and they're prepared to support the case that we have brought and I think that we hope very much that the government will listen to us now and it'll take the opportunity to, um, to do what it promised to do, which is to um, change the law now and give us this opportunity to vote. That's the fair thing to do. Although it might benefit the government's cause to do exactly that, because expats are more vote likely to vote to stay in, it seems the government is not going to be getting involved. Number 10 has said the Prime Minister welcomes this decision because it was a decision originally made by both Houses of Parliament. The disenfranchised, disenfranchised expats, though, are going to fight on. All right, probably weeks at the High Court. Thank you. 
And our political editor, Robert Peston, examines the case for staying or leaving the EU in a special Tonight programme. He looks at how the vote could affect our security and immigration. That's Europe in or out tonight on ITV at 7.30. And finally tonight, Leicester City will make a football fairy tale come true this Sunday if they beat Manchester United. Victory will crown them unlikely Premier League champions for the first time in their history. But that trophy isn't the only prize on offer. Local businesses are offering free diamonds and curries and even the city's famous crisp factory is getting involved, as our sports correspondent Ian Payne reports. It's just another afternoon at the Walker's factory in Leicester as the booted up and hair netted workforce deliver their daily output of five million packets of crisps a day. Or is it? Because in the staff canteen as the title looms, a few football rebels have smuggled in non-regulation clothing. Beside a giant picture of the football stadium, they're wearing Leicester City shirts. Are you boys allowed to wear these shirts on the floor? Not well. We we wear overalls and smocks on the shop floor. We don't normally get the chance to wear kind of Leicester socks. This is this is quite good for us. But at least they're wearing something. Unlike the company's most famous employee, Gary Lineker has said he'll present match of the day in just his underpants if Leicester win the league. So Walkers are driving a near naked image of Lineker to matches. His modesty hidden by crisps. And the closer the team gets to the title, the more packets are removed. Here's the latest. And yes, it has been photoshopped. Thank you. And they're not the only food providers cashing in on Leicester's success. A local restaurant is giving away a thousand free curries if they win it, but there's a catch. You've got to prove you're a Leicester fan. How do I prove I'm a Leicester fan? You've got to show your season ticket or a, or a ticket of some nature where you've been to Leicester City matches and that's where you... What about a programme? <laughs> no, not a programme. No. <laughs> but if free curries and crisps are a bit lowbrow for you, how about some Leicester City diamonds? This jeweller is such a fan, he's giving away free matching wedding rings to striker Jamie Vardy and his fiancée for their marriage next month. What you get to guy, they pretty much has got everything. Um, and I knew that they need a wedding ring and, um, and I can do that and I decided to do that for them. And you're just going to give them for free? Correct, yeah. It looks like everyone's going to benefit in Leicester. Ian Payne, ITV News. <laughs> Curry and crisps, yes. <laughs> Lineker in his underpants. Diamonds, so no. yes, please. Tom Bradby will be here with news at 10. But from all the team here, have a very good evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>